Today we talk about a phone that has stood the test of time, the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. This phone made its debut three and a half years ago at a staggering price of $1,300. Today you can pick it up refurbished at around $350. But is it still worth buying today or is it just a waste of money? In this video, we are going to look at reasons to buy and reasons not to buy the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra in 2024. And we are going to start with the display. This phone has an irresistible display that should be a reason to convince you to buy. You get a huge 6.9 inch AMOLED 2K display that you could easily mistake to be a new flagship phone from this year. The bold and vibrant colors coupled with their 10 plus certification ensures an immersive viewing experience, particularly ideal for watching movies and TV shows due to its excellent color reproduction and dynamic range. Adding to the display's appeal is the impressive 120Hz refresh rate offering fluidity and responsiveness to the user interface. It's also adaptive, meaning it adjusts between 60Hz and 120Hz based on usage. So while giving you fluid performance, you also get to save your battery life. The design of the phone is another reason to consider buying it. Being the last note phone from Samsung, it went out with a bang design-wise. Many would argue that it's the best design from a Samsung phone ever. The combination of the curved display and back with the Note's signature boxy design brings out an elegant looking phone. Protected by Gorilla Glass Victus on both the front and back, the device can survive the usual small accidents due to daily use, ensuring durability and longevity. And the IP68 dust and water resistance rating further solidifies its build quality. Even by 2024 standards, this is still a premium looking phone. Another compelling reason to consider the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra is its formidable camera system. With a triple camera setup, including 108 megapixel main lens, a 12 megapixel ultrawed lens with a 120 degree field of view, a 12 megapixel telephoto lens featuring 5 times optical zoom and an impressive 50 times hybrid zoom, and a 10 megapixel selfie camera, this device is a photography powerhouse. The 108 megapixel main camera, in particular, shines when it comes to capturing details, giving you the freedom to crop photos without sacrificing their quality. The overall camera performance is outstanding consistently delivering sharp images with vibrant colors. The video capabilities are also equally impressive with the rear camera supporting up to 8K video, although capped at 24 frames per second. If you're a content creator, the 4K video recording at 30 and 60 FPS for both the rear and selfie cameras makes it an amazing option, especially if you can't currently afford a camera. Moreover, it also has pro video mode, letting you play around with the settings like exposure and focus like a professional will have almost zero complaints with the camera. The Note 20 Ultra also comes out as a performance powerhouse, giving you a compelling reason to consider it. With two processor options, the Exynos 990 chipset and the superior Snapdragon 865 Plus chipset, it goes without saying that you should opt for the Snapdragon version for a better experience. It will handle almost everything you throw at it. It is paired with 12GB RAM and 128GB to 512GB internal storage. And if the storage is not enough, you can expand it via microSD card up to 1TB, something many phones of today lack. In comparison to new $350 phones available today, the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra's processing power easily outshines its competitors, making it an attractive option for those who'd like superior performance in instances like gaming without spending $1,000. Another noteworthy feature is the inclusion of the S Pen. This is something very rare in phones within the $50 price range, and it brings a touch of versatility to the user experience. Capable of tasks ranging from note taking and drawing to doodling and taking quick screenshots, the S Pen proves itself as a valuable tool for productivity and creativity alike. With a response time of 9 milliseconds, it may not match the speed of the newer S Pens with 2.4 milliseconds response time, but it still delivers a fast and responsive rating experience just like a pen and paper. On the flip side, one reason that should stop you from buying the phone is the lack of a headphone jack. While Bluetooth offers convenience, there is still lag and latency, especially when someone is gaming or watching a movie. This is something that you'd never experience with wired headphones. So if you prefer the reliability of wired headphones, this phone may not be for you. The charging speeds of the phone may also not impress everyone. It's equipped with 25 watt charging, which may feel slow as compared to its other competitors in the smartphone market. To be fair, even current Samsung, Apple and Google flagships have around the same speeds, but still, they are slow. Phones from other manufacturers such as the OnePlus, Oppo, Xiaomi, Realme and many more have much faster charging speeds which are quite useful and efficient. This could be a deal breaker for some and an, an issue for others, so it's right there in the middle. One other drawback that the phone has is the lack of more software updates. 
it launched with Android 10 and got updates up to Android 13. But that was its last software update, so it doesn't even have the current Android 14. If you are one who prefers getting the latest features from Android and Samsung, getting this phone won't give you justice. For $350, the phone stands as a solid option for those seeking a feature-rich device without breaking the bank. Even though it will have certain drawbacks such as charging speeds and limited software updates, battery life may also not be the best due to aging, but it's still decent. For those who still have their Note 20 Ultras, if you can't afford the S24 Ultra or S23 Ultra, please keep it, no need to panic. It will still serve you way better than new budget and mid-range phones. What other older phones should you talk about? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, I'm Milan and this is Fuzitech. Subscribe.